Hello and a very warm welcome to This Is Racing in association with Boyle Sports, a brand new show where we dissect, digest and delve into the biggest races of the week. And this weekend it comes no bigger than the November meeting at Cheltenham, a fine weekend of action in prospect, including, of course, the Paddy Power Gold Cup and the Greatwood Handicap Hurdle. I'm delighted to say that I'll be in the company of esteemed judge of horse flesh, <laughs> Steve Mellis. Steve, great to have you on the show. Thank you, John. Very much looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, it's my favourite Cheltenham meeting. Um, I know you've got the big meeting, but I, certainly when, from going point of view, everything just... Uh, I, I like racing where things are ahead of you, where things might be something, yeah, rather yeah. than... You know, Cheltenham, and there's so much pressure on that who actually wins. I like finding out whether something might be good enough. You know, I, I find that quite exciting. It's like I prefer a, a Craven meeting on the flat to necessarily a classic, you know, yeah, because sure. it's... All about potential. Might, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We've got a few in there. We, my Drogo, yeah. third time lucky, who could yeah. be pretty smart, couldn't they? Well, big week, we were saying, of air for Dan Skelton, isn't it? I mean, they're two of his absolute stars. And, uh, I mean, third time lucky we've seen other fences. My Drogo, not yet, but, but, but yeah, very, very exciting. And talking of my Drogo, he is the first horse we're going to concentrate on in the November Novices Chase on Friday. Here is the betting you can see. He's long odds on to get the job done for Dan and Harry Skelton. Nine to four on. Gin on Lime is next in four to one after winning nicely at Tipperary last time. And then Embittered Nassalam, Galley Hill and Oscar Elite all around similar prices. But Steve, it really does look as though my Drogo on potential at least is the one to beat, isn't he? He's just about the best British novice hurdler last year, and they m weren't even tempted to stay over hurdles, which they could have done. Mm. You know, they, they were entitled to have another season over hurdles if they wanted to. If you see him in the flesh, which I have done, make and shape, he's absolutely changed. He's a beautiful looking horse. He largely jumps hurdles very well, yep. and going into it, he's got all the credentials to make a top class chaser. I mean, you want Friday to go out of the way in one piece, but um, if he's um, going to be the horse we think he is, he's, he's, it's it's. It's his to lose. He's arguably the most exciting British novice chaser around, isn't he? At least he could be yeah. if, he's, if he's up there with Brave Man's Game and that sort of horse. He's, he's, he's just got all that potential in the world and he's got a lovely scopey frame to build into, isn't he, as well? Uh, completely, uh, completely. I think he was a... Uh, Brave Man's Game is a very good horse, but I think he'd, he was probably, certainly potentially, a better hurdler than Brave Man's Game. He's a quicker hurdler, anyway. Mm. Um, and I think he's got the stamina down the line to stay further than two and a half miles. So they're the, that's what you want in a top-class horse. You, you, whatever level you're dealing with in, in, in Grade 1 company, you've got to have pace, and he has got plenty of pace. Mm, the Kelvin Hughes has had a son of Milan, Santini, but I think my drogo has got a fair bit more pace, at least, than he has. Well, he's definitely got more pace, and hopefully more... Um, and I, do, I think Santini towards the end had a bit of an attitude problem. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, at the moment, by Drogo hasn't got bad ideas. Absolutely. Well, the biggest danger could be gin on lime to my yep. Drogo. A horse has had plenty of experience over fences so far, and we can see her here winning at Tipperary last time. And I thought this was really quite a taking effort to beat some decent horses in behind, including Fanda Blue. Yeah, no, I think he was. Um, she says seven runs over fences. That's her biggest advice. She rated, I think, in the official race in the 140s. But she's got plenty of experience. She knows how to jump. And you could argue that this latest performance was just about her best performance. So she's still going the right way. I don't think she's got the potential myself to be top, top class. Mm. Uh, but she's got... It's a good time to be meeting a first-time out novice because she can bring plenty of experience into the board. She's got that lovely cocktail of fast, slick jumping along yeah. with... What a high cruising speed as well. So I think it wouldn't be a surprise if she goes to the front and tries to burn them off. I think you're right. I think that's well she would. Again, if you're uh, an experienced horse, you want to use your jumping, and that's the best way to use it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think she remains exciting. And that, I think that run that she's already had will stand her in good stead too. She's both fit and she's uh, experienced. They're, they are two big pluses. We're not talking about, you know, when you and I are going to discuss here who's going to be the best horse long term, don't think there'll be much of an argument. Mm. We're talking about on, the, on Friday, She's got some things in her favour. One horse that could be very exciting long term also has an entry on Sunday in the three mile novice chase is Oscar Elite for Colin Tizard. He had some fine form over hurdles last season, really improved for a step up in trip, didn't he? Yeah, I, I, again, really like that one. I find it a very exciting horse. And when you think the Tizard yard was mainly out of sorts for most of last year and they've come back in better form this year, I do think the horse improved for a step up. I think stamina is, is, is its strong point. Was it second in the Albert Bartlett? Uh, when it's been placed at Aintree as well, again looking a stayer. So whether two and a half miles on good ground will be ideal, I don't, or goodish ground will be ideal, I don't know. But down the line, I think he's going to have a very good winter. Yeah, he's a very likeable individual, isn't he? He's got plenty of scope as well. I think he is another who will improve her fences as well. And Absolutely. I think probably is going to be Colin Tizard's best novice chaser 
if he takes to the game. I agree with that. I think that completely agree with you. Again, it could have stayed over hurdles, had a go at the champion uh, stayers if they'd wanted to, but they wasted no time. And I think they've done the right thing. I think if you've got a horse who basically is a chaser in the making, then the sooner you get him doing it, the better. And he finished third in the in entry after that in the Sefton. That was a good performance too, wasn't it? So he's clearly got a big engine. He's got a good big engine. He was improving at the end of last year. Stays well. Very exciting. Yeah. Well, great to hear your thoughts. My Drogo, probably the winner there, you think? Oh, I would imagine if My Drogo jumps adequately, he'll, he'll, he's a very exciting horse, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be very interesting to hear what Boyle Sports Supremo Leon Blanche has to say about this contest. Leon, really good, warm welcome to you. Great to have you on the show. My Drogo in the first race we're going to talk about on the Friday at Cheltenham looks to have a pretty big chance, doesn't he? Yeah, look, I think uh, listening to what both of you gents have said, Tom, uh, he is Britain's number one novice chaser. I think there's high hopes that he can show what he showed us over hurdles and transform it over the bigger obstacles. And no doubt that the skeletons hold him in very high regard. He's a warm order favourite, of course, nine to four on. And as Steve has alluded to, I think with Gin on Lime, she's got experience, she's race fit, four to one second favourite. It's a perfect opportunity for the Boyle Sports offer for Cheltenham for every single race this weekend where you get a free bet if you finish second or third to the starting price favourite. So we're sure our offer is going to be very popular in this particular contest because taking such prohibitive odds about a horse making his first run over fences is very short indeed. He has all the potential, but he's got to do it over the larger obstacles and I think Gin on Lime, Henry de Bromhead, uh, they'll pull it up to my Drogo. They'll try and go from the front, try and ask a few questions about his jumping. But certainly, as potential goes, my Drogo does look to have it all in his locker. And he's one of, I think, the UK's leading hopes to try and get all the way to March and hopefully get a win for the UK in, of course, the battle against the Irish. Absolutely, which we're going to try and get closer to come March. But it looks a pretty attractive weekend in terms of your offer because there are a couple of short price favourites alongside my Drogo, notably, of course, third time lucky and possibly Brave Man's Game on Sunday as well. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people don't like backing short price favourites, Tom, and this is a perfect offer to get the chance of a free bet if you finish second or third to the starting price favourite. It gives people a lot of choice and a lot of offer in terms of trying to pick something with a bit of value. There will be a couple of short price favourites. Um, some people like back and jollies, but a lot of people who want to have a little bet on Cheltenham over Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's great to know that we're covering every single race over the three days. Free bet if you finish second or third to that starting price favourite. Lovely stuff, Leon. Thanks very much. Looking forward to talking to you a bit later on in the show. Cheers, Tom. That's Friday done and dusted. Now on to Saturday at Cheltenham. We're looking at two races. The From the Horse's Mouth Novices Chase, which is also called the November Chase, just like the Friday one. So watch your bet slips on that. And then the Paddy Power Gold Cup, the feature race of the weekend as well. But first up, we're going to look at that Novices Chase, which sees third time Lucky, who obliterated his opposition last time out at Cheltenham. And Steve, this is a horse who's really quite exciting, isn't he? Yeah, again, we're talking off air, Tom. I, this... It's a rarity. I honestly thought the bookmakers erred on the side of generosity anti-post after this. I'm not saying this is going to be an article, but normally you get a wide margin winner from a well-regarded horse, and the, the quotes are very short. Now, things in his favour, first of all, the, the performance where he jumped beautifully, mm -hmm. you really couldn't fall his jump in, yeah. and one and a hat canter. I mean, they're not top-class horses, but he still beat them really easily. Secondly, he's a bang two-miler. I don't think this is going to be one of those horses, will he go here or will he step up in trip? I can't imagine they're going to go more than two miles. So when they when it crossed the line like it did, beating Buddy Rich, you know, let's say, in a canter, I thought they'd be going 10s, 12 to 1, that sort of thing. Briefly, there was 20 to 1. I thought that was a big price. There's mm -hmm. 14s and 12s now is the general price, and that's about right. Because I think you can imagine an Arkle with... A Bob Ollinger or an Appreciate It winning their trials really well and being a warm favourite, of course you can. But you can easily see him being 
Britain's main hope and being a six or seven to one chance in a seven or eight run of field. I can, in my mind, I can see that as a a, a very big possibility. So, um, I think I thought that was an error. I think his his career could not have started better. Is what I'm long windedly saying. I couldn't agree with you more. And I have to say, in my experience of watching races, the way that he was so fresh through the early part of the contest, I thought. Even if he's very good indeed, he's yeah. surely going to get a little bit tired later on, but he just kept going further clear, didn't he? Well, I, I, he, he almost jumped his way into the lead. I don't think the plan was to make all. Um, and he, he uh, halfway round, his jumping was so good. And uh, uh, the jockey just let him go. And his jumping remains really good. Look, any horse, because they're novices, things may go wrong at the weekend. But he's going to be a short price favourite again. It's perfectly possible he'll lead. And his price can only shorten. That was my thinking anyway. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. And possibly the biggest danger, once again, just like my Droger was in online, but in this contest, another Irish raider could be the biggest danger, and that is Dancing on My Own, who won in game fashion last time, beating again Buddy Rich. Yeah, beating Buddy Rich. It, it, it wasn't quite so easy for him. But this, this fits in what Leon was saying about the uh, um, the, spe the offer about being second or third. They, they won't to, to an SB favourite. He's the absolute archetypal horse for that. He's got experience. He jumps well. If things things can go wrong with any horse, if things third time lucky, you know, God forbid, falls over or, or, or doesn't jump as well, then this is the horse most likely you'd imagine to take an advantage. He jumped pretty well this day. I'm not sure he's a bang two miler. Down the line, I think he's going to want further. But that's not a bad thing in for the for the offer you're talking about because I think the horse is going to be going on at the finish. And uh, um, I, yeah, I can I can see him as being a horse who, uh, um, if, he, if he doesn't win, I can certainly see him being in the frame. Yeah, absolutely. Free bet, remember, with Boyle Sports. If your horse finishes second or third to the likely odds on favourites in third time lucky. We see Dancing on my own, jumping the last. He had to knuckle down quite bravely, but he had had a long time off the track before this. Yeah, that, absolutely. So he, you, you, he was entitled to feel fitness. I thought he, he had a, showed a really good attitude. His jumping wasn't as slick as uh, uh, third time luckies, but he's got a lot of stamina. Um, he's got a good attitude. And I say, that experience will do him the world of good. And of course, Buddy Rich has franked the form with a win earlier this week. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they franked both of them as mm -hmm. form. Yeah, won one um, at the weekend in, in, in pretty good. He's, 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 a, he's a perfect benchmark. If you're beating Buddy Rich, you're a good horse. If you're beating Buddy Rich well, like third time lucky, then you're potentially a very good horse. Absolutely. And one race we should talk about is the Rising Stars Novices Chase at Wincanton, which was on the weekend. It's really rather nice, isn't it? To see British Novice Chasers winning races, which we might not see in March yeah, but for yeah, the moment. Make the most of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Captain Tomcat beating uh, Mick Pasta in that contest. Mick Pasta travelling up strongly as he usually does, but Captain Tomcat went clear in the closing stages. Now, it's, it's, it's not guaranteed that either horse will run in this contest, no. but if they do, would you be quite keen to be on the side of Captain Tomcat winning once again? I'd be on the other way, Tom, myself. Okay. I think the shorter trip will suit Mick Pasta. Um, I think he's... I'm not sure he, he finds an awful lot of ride anyway, but I thought he looked the best horse until the final two furlongs, really. I mean, the winner was, again, an admirable attitude and jumped great under pressure. But I thought, if anything, he slightly outstayed Mick Pasta. I thought, mm. I thought coming back in trip would be a good thing. And the way he will be ridden, again, if we're going to go on about the, um, uh, about the offer, he won't get embroiled in anything silly early on, Mick Pastor. It'll be a picking up the pieces type sure. ride, which is ideal, really. So I, I thought too much. I, I would fan, if they both turned up, I don't know they will. I would see a form reverse for myself. What about you? I rather agree with you about that shorter trip. I think he looks a very tricky conveyance, though, for a jockey. I mean, very hard to hold on to him. Definitely. So that two mile trip, I think, is definitely the way forward for him in time. Yeah, strong pay for two. Absolutely, it? yeah. Could be yeah. one for a big handicap at some stage as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's on to the big race of the weekend, which is the Paddy Power Gold Cup. Once again, a cracking field assembled for this, very competitive, all sorts of horses having their first starts for different yards. And Steve, one of those is Layla, who obviously had some very smart form early in his career. You can see there, 11 to 2, Protector at just about shading favouritism at 5 to 1, Al Dancer 7, then 10 to 1, and bigger the rest. But Layla, he won really impressively back in 2018 at Cheltenham on Novice. Chase debut that looks really exciting, but really it's been a bit disappointing since then. Well, hasn't he's, it? Had, he's, had, he's, he's certainly had his issues. He's had his, his health problem. I think he's had a wind up since his move yard from Katie Woolacott to, to to Paul Nichols, and she did brilliant. Really. She won a Grazy Brace as a bumper, a hurdler, and a chaser, which is pretty unusual. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. The horse has been you know, a star for her. I think on the pick of her form, of his form, I think 149 is very workable if Paul Nichols has found the key to him. And uh, the fact that, uh, certainly at the five day stage, he had a couple of entries and Harry Compton was down to ride Layla. I took that as a positive. He, can, he acts at Cheltenham, he can jump. His season at the end of the year went wrong. I think they were physical reasons. I think he's, he's very interestingly handicapped personally. Yeah, I would agree with that. And this is his last completed start back at Cheltenham, yeah. January 2020. Pulled up twice since then. But on this performance, he's now four pounds lower, I think. He looks 
very nicely treated to at least go close. And of course, we know how well Paul Nichols does at improving new recruits. Well, and he's, you know, you'd imagine his target is this race. He might be a horse you can't get lots and lots of races out of in a year. That's certainly been his style in the past. So he might be, I, I'm thinking to myself anyway, that he, he'd be very much targeting the Paddy Power as opposed to, you know, he had done a run beforehand. I would imagine it's all systems go and try and get wins out of it, you know, before the season wears on too long. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be very interesting to see what you can do with Layla. Yeah. Uh, another horse who is fascinating this season is Protector Rats, yep. who we saw winning in Grade 1 company at Aintree at the end of last yep. season. His first start now, but as always with Dan Skelton, likely to be raring to go for this. I'm probably the best target trainer um, in England, you could argue. He's, mm. he's very good at that. And this has definitely been the target. It's it's a bit what sort of punter you are. You either I, I'm attracted. Like I said at the beginning, I like I like potential in horses, I suppose. So I'm always attracted by second season novice chasers in the hope they might develop into something really good. Mm. But you could equally argue that experience would be a good thing, and this Layla Rand, this horse may be found out for that reason. But I do think he goes into the race unexposed. Um, his jump in was good uh, on difficult track. Aintree, the mold makers takes a lot of jump in. Yeah. He was good this day. And the mark is a very, very workable mark. The yard's in great form, clearly. And as I said earlier, I'm sure this has been the target. And he's a winner at Cheltenham as well, which helps. Uh, completely. So he's got lots and lots of things going for him. I, I can absolutely see why those two head, uh, head the market there. They're second season chasers with the potential to be a fair bit better than their mark. Obviously, the potential to not make it, but the, the potential at the moment is there. Yeah, so much potential on show in this contest. Yeah. One horse that I think has a lot of potential himself, I'd like to talk about quickly, is Galahad Quest, yeah. who was third at Weatherby behind uh, quite a good horse of Nigel Whiston Davis this last time. I thought he travelled really well into that contest, possibly travelling the best of all of them coming yep. to the second last. And I think that pipe opener was possibly just needed a touch, but I think he's definitely well handicapped. And if coming on for this, has got a pretty good chance. I think he's almost guaranteed to come on for it. I mean, you, you get used to the way trainers train. Nick Williams, again, I'm a big fan of Nick Williams as a trainer. He brings horses along gradually. I mean, a lot of his juveniles have never even seen a race course before they run. So he's not a person, I'm not surprised the Paddy Power is his second run. Mm. I think the first run for yes, the way agree. he trains yeah. is, is important. So I can fully see that. He travelled really well this day. It was a perfectly good run anyway on, on the figures. And the chance that he'll improve a few pounds for it, I can completely see. Yeah, absolutely. He had to switch behind Good Boy Boy there at yeah. the end, which is not going to help at the end of a, a first run back over two and a half miles. At the end of the race, you don't want to be doing that. So I think he will come on for that. Yeah. And I hope he does too. And the last little bit of video we're going to look at is from last year's race where Cool Cody yeah. sprung a bit of a surprise winning, yeah. but there were plenty of these horses in opposition up against him and reopposing this weekend. Yeah, and he went on to prove, well, not that there was no fluke, we know plenty about the horse anyway, but he ran really well at the festival and another race. He's a really good jumper. He's virtually guaranteed to run a race, Touchwood. Um, he holds a few of the other rivals here, but the main thing this day is jumping was so good. He was really... Um, one of those sort of would not be passed performances and he's a really bold jumper when he's in a rhythm and I'm sure he's again that the mark he's, he's I think he's four pounds higher now than he was last year mm. won't make life easier and he's vulnerable to an improver but he'll he wears his heart on the sleeve and uh, he's entitled to run very well of course we know he acts particularly well and he goes in trouble I haven't mentioned he goes well in big fields yeah. sometimes the second season novice chasers the worry about them is that they've been beating up four or five runs, that's the nature of yeah. good novice yeah, cases, yeah. where he's got loads of handicap experience and the hustle muscle of a big field race. Definitely, I thought that run on hurdles <coughs> back at uh, Cheltenham last time was a really good effort too on his first start back. One horse I'd like to put to you is Spirit of the Games. We know an awful yeah. lot about this horse, but yeah. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Dan Skelton came out and said, well, I couldn't really pick between the two because Spirit of the Games, him that is protector right, that is, because Spirit of the Games is very well handicapped and has run so well at Cheltenham in the past. Well, he's a very good jumper. He's used to big fields. Uh, he's run well off, 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 off this sort of mark in in the past. Ex Harry Wissinger, wasn't he? That, that's right. I think that's right, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it, jockeys can only ride one. Uh, and again, I think jockeys tend to ride potential. I think... Uh, because the horse might take them to, you know, out of handicap company. That could be the reason. But you certainly, on its on its on its own merit, the horse has got a very good chance. And just to quickly mention Al Dancer, who was third in that race last year. We just saw starting out for Sam Thomas now, who I have to say I'm a big fan of. Yeah, so, so the, the theme here about horses moving moving yards, isn't there? Look, Al Dancer's got loads of good form from 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 his novice days over hurdles through the chasing uh, novice chasing. Well, my worry about him is that he can hit a flat spot. I, I thought in races and. If we are talking about goodish ground, just on the softest side, hustle bustle, you'll need to be jumping really well and not hit that flat spot. Yeah, totally agree. So in summation, 
Who's your horse to follow in this race? It's tough. Uh, Layla will be my will be my stab on the grounds. I think the 149 is a mark he could definitely win off. It's a risk because he comes with the, the the medical problems he's had. But if Paul Nichols has sorted them out, I think he would be the one who appealed to me most. And you like Galahad Quest? Yeah, I'll be taking a pot on Galahad Quest. Just think he's going to improve a little bit for that third last time. I thought it was a great run the circumstances anyway, to be honest. But yeah. now it's time to see what Boyle Sports Supremo Leon Blanche thinks of the race. Leon, once again, it's an absolute cracker of a race. Plenty of horses having their first starts for new stables. Who's your eye drawn to most in this contest? Yeah, look, I think obviously with Lawler, um, if anyone can get him right first time out, I think Paul Nichols is the man uh, to turn to. We saw how ripe he had Froden uh, to win at Down Royal in the grade one first time out. You've got to follow Paul. Um, probably between him and Protectora to see who's actually going to be favourite um, in terms of this handicap chase. But I do like Spirit of the Games. He mightn't win enough, but I think at 20 to 1, um, I think if you're backing him each way, I think you will get a very good run for your money. He's got a lot of course form over both courses on the old and the new. Of course, this will be run over the old course uh, this coming Saturday. He ran a blinder to finish second in it last year. And I take Steve's point, he jumps very well. There's not a lot of rain in the forecast, so you've got to get off. You've got to get into a rhythm quite early in this particular handicap because if you don't, I think your chance will be over before it's even begun. So you want to get someone who's able to jump that doesn't mind the hustle bustle of a big handicap. And I think at the prices, I think spirit of the games, each way is a decent proposition. I think the most likely favourite, I'm probably going to give it mm, maybe to Lawler. I think he might just start favoured with that Paul Nichols support on a big Saturday so he might be the starting price favourite, but that'll be interesting to see come Saturday afternoon. Lovely stuff, Leon. Thanks very much. Spirit of the Games, of course, very well handicapped and loves Cheltenham as well. That is Saturday done and dusted. Paddy Power Gold Cup and the Novice Chase as well. Plenty to look forward to with all those horses having their first starts for new stables. <laughs>on to Sunday and the fascinating races just keep on coming the Cheltenham Caravan rolls on and this time we can talk about the Schlur chase which once again is a cracking renewal here we are with the runners Nube Negra and put the kettle on the 7-4 to four joint favourites renewing form from the champion chase of last season Sky Pirates is 7-2 to two for Little Log 5-1 to one, Rouge Vif 8-1 to one, and the outsider of the party is Bundoran at 40 Steve a really good renewal if they all turn up here with that champion chase form up again with Put the kettle on and Nubia Negra locking horns once more. If you want to get a, uh, a horse with uh, course form, then put the kettle on Jim uh, is your lady. Um, she's, I think she's fourth and four, but she's won an arc horse, she's mm -hmm. won a, a champion chase. And I can always find reasons for thinking why she won't win. And she proves you wrong over and over again. Going into today's race, or to, to Sunday's race, of the two marketed, I would slightly favour Nubia Negra. I thought there was, there's only half a length between them anyway this day. Uh, but it was a messy race. I mean, Rouge Reef found trouble. There was all, uh, the, all sorts of trouble in the race. But I thought the very slight error at the last that Nube Negra made, we just stumbled slightly and had to be switched, would have made it even though you see trouble there on the inside, Rouge mm -hmm. Reef um, and so Royal finding trouble. Now, Put the Kettle on is, is just so admirable. She finds plenty. She jumps well. Um, and this was her day. It might be more difficult this year with uh, uh, both Willie Mullins and Paul Nichols' stars waiting in the wings. Sure. But of these runners, I thought Nubi Negra impressed with the way he travelled this mm, day. He really travelled. Had he pinged the last, I think it would have been close. Uh, you just see, it's not a terrible mistake, but just stumbled slightly and then had to be switched and got beat half a length. I think without that, just there. It's not much. Mm. It really isn't much. But we're only talking about half a length and... Uh, um, I would very, very slightly favour him, but not strongly. Absolutely. You know that shuddering feeling you get when someone puts their nails down a blackboard? Well, I had exactly yeah. that, because I was all over Nube Negra, and I Were thought, you? well, he's got so much trouble in running here, he needs to switch out, it's probably not going to go right, but I think he probably is the best horse in the race, and I would probably stand by that. Yeah, well, I, don't, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I think, I think it's a tough race, isn't it? I think the horse who's, in, on last year, showed the, the, work, the very best piece of form, I would have said, with Polisolog winning the Tingle Creek. Now, things went wrong after that. Maybe you can um, see it now. But there you go. What a, what a gallery. <laughs> but I do. I think, I, I think this was 
just about the best piece of form on offer. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not sure that we saw the same position on again after that, but we're back to Paul Nichols producing a horse first time out. It's perfectly possible. Um, and I've got to say, it's my daughter's favourite horse, so I have to give it a <laughs> positive it a nice mention positive anyway. Mention, yeah. uh, he's a bold, brilliant jumper, probably the best jumper in the race, although I, get, I do think Nube Negra loves to ping his obstacles too. But yep. He's got that proven form in the book. Maybe just age possibly could be catching Definitely. up with a bit of touch. I, 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 I don't see him winning a champion chase. I think this is, I mean, I guess the Tingle Creek will be his target again. Any horse who's jumped around Sandon like he did. But I read something about a month ago about how he's going to go straight to the Tingle Creek. I find it quite interesting he's coming here instead. Yeah. Um, and again, just first time up these days might be the time to get him. And if you're looking at the race from a pace perspective, Politolog looks to be the most likely front runner, doesn't he? Because you've got Nube Negra and Sky Pirate, who we'll see in a second, yeah, yeah. who love to be held up and travel very strongly. But Politolog yeah. could get an easy time up front. Yeah, and if he gets in a rhythm, and if, if Paul has got him. Uh, pretty fit. He's got a great record fresh, the horse. He's won after an absence a number of times. At the price, if we were shown at the beginning, I would have thought that's the one who's maybe is slightly overpriced. Yeah, I would agree with that. One more horse we'd love to talk about, it's one of our favourite horses, is Sky Pirate, yeah, because well, yeah. he's, he's a horse who just keeps on improving. Okay, second at the end of last season, but uh, sorry, second at the beginning of this season, I should say, but he is a horse who ran in this race off top weight and clearly has so much untapped potential still over this kind of trip, I think it's fair to say. Well, that's what the making of him last year was dropping him in trips, wasn't, wasn't it? it? Yeah. He was running over longer trips and people thought he was maybe not genuine. Or what he was, as it turns out, was not staying. Yeah, they for the really good first run of the season. First of all, I think the winner's a pretty good horse. Mm. Before midnight, jumped fabulously. This day. But for most of the race, Sky Pirate travelled like Sky Pirate does, which mm. is with a, a great deal of zest. With that run under his belt, we were talking about other races earlier in, in the show, about if you're going to meet these horses, when's the time to meet them? And Sky Pirate's got a race under his book, uh, under its belt, and he's coming here race fit. That's the advantage he's got over one or two who he might be taking on on, on Sunday. With he as good as them, I don't think his form is quite as good as one or two of the others, but uh, he will be meeting them with the advantage of having had that race fit, uh, that race not too long ago to get him fit. And rather than carrying a big weight, now he'll meet them off level terms as well, which can only help. Also got to be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So summing up, who would be your pick in that contest? My pick is not a confident one, I'm not going to pretend it is. At the prices that we were shown, I would go for Politolog. OK, lovely stuff. I'm going to stick with Nube Negro because I'm a huge fan of his. I think that cruising speed is to die for. Mm -hmm. Leon, time to bring you in here. It'll be interesting to get your thoughts on this race because, as always, the Schler Chase is a good pointer to two-mile contests further in the season. But actually, the best two-mile slick jumpers have all assembled for this. At least they hopefully will do. And Nube Negra and put the kettle on, renewing rivalry once again. Yeah, look, Tom, it's a fascinating slower chase. Um, if they all turn up, uh, this is what you want to see. Heavyweights going into battle very early in the season. Put the kettle on. You cannot but admire her. She's so tough. She comes alive at Cheltenham. She's putting her unbeaten record on the line. Nube Negra, I'd probably agree with you, Tom, travelled extremely well in last year's uh, champion chase, but... Put the kettle on when she gets into a battle and when she sees that rising hill, she just seems to find another gear. And you guys, I think Steve went for Politolog at the prices. You've gone for Nube Negra. I think I would just slightly go for put the kettle on because that course form is just outstanding. I know all unbeaten records have to come to an end sometime, but all the reports in Ireland from Henry de Bromhead are that she's in scintillating form. She's going to go over there once again. And as I said, I just love that course form. There wasn't an awful lot between them in the champion chase, and that's why they're neck and neck in the betting. I think our offer here as well, the free bet, second or third to the starting price favourite, whoever does start favourite, I'm sure it's going to prove very popular because the three of us have all picked a different winner. And I'm sure all the punters out there are all going to have their own opinions. Fingers crossed they all turn up because I think we're in for one hell of a race. Palililog, last year in the Tingle Creek, he jumped from fence to fence. He was absolutely outstanding. And if Paul Nichols can get him right first time out, he's a big player. But so are the two ahead of him in the betting, Nube Negra and Putta Ketlan. For me, Henry de Bromhead's mare just to win this fascinating contest. Brilliant. So put the kettle on for Leon, Politolog for Steve, and I'm going to go with Nube Negra, which of course means black cloud. But I'm hoping he'll produce a performance brimming with radiant sunshine in the Schler. Now onto the Greatwood, which, of course, is one of the big handicaps of the meeting, a cracking contest. And once again, we have plenty of 
Unexposed handicappers in opposition. No ordinary Joe, West Cork and Adagio have all got their best days ahead of them, you'd like to think. No ordinary Joe, 5-1. to one. West Cork, 6-1. to one. Adagio, 7s. Then Irish Raider, Advanced Virgo in at 9s. And 10-1 to one and bigger the rest. Tritonic is at 10-1 to one for Adrian Heskin. Steve, what are your thoughts on this? Because I know we, beforehand we said that the unexposed handicappers could potentially be slightly vulnerable here. Yeah, I, I was I was looking for a price, rightly or wrongly, Tom. I mean, no ordinary Joe's in very good form comes in on a hat trick, but they've been small field races over two and a half miles. Might be that it's a really it might be one three three to shoe him, but for me it doesn't make any 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 appeal at that price. West Cork of the three at the head of the market, I can see, but we haven't seen him for since two thousand and twenty. Mm. Um in a grade two Dovka at Kempton. On that on that form, to be fair, I can see his mark of one thirty four being very attractive and this day and age they do tend to get all his fit after an absence. So I can see it, but he needs to be a hundred percent. And Adagio's a four year old stepping up uh, at first sort of go as a as a senior horse. I thought one four seven was maybe enough. So I was looking elsewhere myself. Yeah, we can see West Cork here finishing second in the yep. dock. That was a good performance. I think he screams well handicapped horse and I think that's why possibly, okay, he might have had some injury issues, but why they've kept him off for this because it's quite a big, well, it's, it's a quite a big vote of confidence in his chance to throw him straight into a handicap like this. Isn't it? Yeah, and I say, well, I, I grew up at a time where horses didn't come back from a several years, first time up and win. Happens all the time with the top trainers now, so it's less of a worry. And you know, it's with Dan Skelton, whose yards in, in obviously in fabulous form. Of the market leaders, that was the one that made much because I thought they, I think, I think his mark really might underestimate him. But is anyone's guess uh, if you, you know, if you're not privy to um, to being a, a mate of Dan's, is anyone's guess how how near that he is at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned Adagio as well; he could be on a good mark. He has some fine form in graded company, including at the Cheltenham Festival last season. We can see him here finishing second in the Triumph Hurdle. That was a really good effort, I thought. Possibly not the strongest of contests in the world, with Zanayir slightly disappointed, but you can't mark down that effort, really, can you? No, I, I feel it was a, a, a weak Triumph. I don't, I don't. I don't think I think the best two for me the best two juveniles last year were Mon Morale who who beats Adagio very easily at Aintree and Zanayir who for whatever reason didn't run his race that day. That's, that's just a personal opinion. I thought it was a, 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 you know, an admirable performance, but I didn't think it was a vintage triumph. Uh, and Adagio, you know, he's won he's won a he's won a finale. He was second in a triumph. I think he's got to be at least as good as this to win off one four seven. That's my, my my own view. Which he might do. He's still he's only a you know, he's still only a four year old, so he might well improve. But I think he needs he's got great attitude, but one four seven I think might be difficult for him. Yeah, it could well be. And but the big plus about him, I suppose, is that he does run Shelton so well. He's won there in the past, and of course produced a fine performance here. Uh, one other horse we should talk about, I think, is going to be the mount of Adrian Heskin. And that is Tritonic, who looked a very exciting hurdle at the beginning of the season last year. Didn't quite go to plan after that, though, did it? No, I mean, he was in that race there was, I think, a 4 to 1 chance for the Triumph Hurdle and disappointed. He then ran OK on the flat, but maybe not his very, very best. And it might have been bumping into a good horse here, but overall, they were expecting to win this, mm. this conditions race, and he didn't win here. So I think he comes with a few things to prove. He's got fitness, um, but he comes here off the back of maybe. Less satisfactory runs than you'd like to see, I think. Yeah, and I'm still not convinced by his jumping. I have to say, because at the no. beginning of last season, when he was even when he was bolting up by 15 lengths in graded company, his jumping was still pretty poor. Everyone was saying if he's going to perform at Cheltenham, he needs to improve on that. And I still don't think, even on this reappearance, it's got that much better. No, and there's going to be a bigger field. Even the races he was running in, not even the Triumph Hurdle didn't have that many runners. There's going to be a few, you'd imagine, for the Great Wood. So he will test his jumping even more. He runs like a stayer as well. I think down the line, he's going to want further than two miles. Yeah, that, that's. But yeah, you see here he's doing his best work up in the closing stages. But I was a bit disappointed he wasn't good enough to win, because he, he would have been fit for the flat, he wouldn't have been unfit. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, one horse we should mention is the Irish Raider this year, well, at least the Irish Raider who's furthest up in the market. We saw the Shunter win last year for Emmett Mullins, that was a bit of a handicap block. Could Advance Virgo be a handicap block, do you think? Could be. He was probably a bit unlucky in a big field race um, at Listowel last time out. Um, he, he didn't get the clearest of runs more than once, and he's 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 gone on to run very well uh, in a big handicap on the flat in Ireland. Although to be fair, that was only off 77, so uh, don't want to get carried away as a superstar. But certainly this day, he didn't have the clearest of run through. He shows he can handle a big field. He shows he can jump, and he will come here very very. This is sorry, this is the, the the flat run, the full run, which is a good run. And he, he's, a, he's a very competitive race, and he He's run well, but he was off 77. It's not like uh, we're talking about a, you know, a top class performance. Yeah, I suppose you've always got to respect Charles Burns, but he sent over one for a big handicap like this one. I'm not convinced 
he's quite as good over hurdles as he is on the flat. He's not quite as consistent. I know he's won over hurdles off a much lower mark, but that's his only win, I think, in handicap company. I think he's probably got a little bit to prove here. Yeah, again, I'm not I'm not 100% sure how well handicapped he is either. Mm. Um, mm. The handicap had a few chances to, to judge him. I say he's run on a, a valuable handicap last time out, so they 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 they. He doesn't come here with a, a, a complete dark horse, I don't think. And I think we should quickly mention the Welsh champion hurdle won by Glory and Fortune last time. And I know you're quite sweet on his chance. Yeah, that's the way, the way I would go. It's a price and he's got to improve, but I think he is improving. The thing that impressed me about Foss Lass, and the gallery will impress me if they show Foss Lass, given his... <laughs> <laughs> given, given his... Uh, uh, the thing that impressed me most was how well he ran through the race. He really travelled. I mean, he was tanking, turning for home, jumped beautifully. This is a step up in class, but at least you'll be given a double-figure prize. Uh, to take a chance, so that would be that would be the way my my pin dropped. Okay, glory and fortune for Steve. I'm going to give a quick mention to Cormier, who was seventh mm -hmm. in this race last year. But he was quite a long way back, didn't really get the clearest of runs, and he's been in much better form on the flat as well this season. Mm -hmm. I think he's well handicapped to at least go close. Brian Ellison's got a decent record in the race in the past. Horses often run well for him, so I'm going to put him above the parapet for me. So Cormier for me, and glory and fortune for Steve in the Greatwood. I'm delighted to say that Adrian Heskin now joins us on the line. Adrian, really good to hear from you and for have you on the show as well. Lots to look forward to this weekend. As always, the Chelt November meeting has got plenty of action to look forward to, hasn't it? Thanks very much, yeah. Um, of course, the Chelt November meeting, it holds a great place in the jumps calendar and um, it's an exciting weekend's racing ahead. Yep, certainly is. And you've got a nice ride in one of the big races on the weekend. That is the Greatwood Handicap Hurdle and Tritonic. Do you think he's pretty fairly handicapped? Um, I think he is, yes. Um, I'm really looking forward to riding him. We were very pleased with his uh, seasonal reappearance in Cheltenham um, at the October meeting. Um, it was a, a big ass giving away um, weight to, to his rivals. and I think he ran very well and we're just excited to see what he can do in a handicap off of that mark. Um, I think he's a horse that will really be suited by the way a handicap has run. He's loads of speed and I think it'll just help him settle early in the race and hopefully he can come home strongly. And I was just saying to Steve beforehand about Tritonic's jumping. We're not sure it's quite there yet. He does seem to have improved the touch, but he still clobbers a few of them, doesn't he? Do you think that's an area in which he needs to work on? Um, I always thought his jumping was quite good. Like Ascot last year, he missed one. Kempton, he didn't miss hurdle in Kempton. He flattened the second last, but he didn't break stride. He was very good that day. Um, he missed the fourth last in Cheltenham the last day, and that probably cost him a little bit of ground. But I just think in a handicap, he's He's sharp enough to travel comfortably in a handicap, so his jumping isn't a worry for me. Um, it's just whether the experience of a big field might just catch him out first time, but um, he's a horse I think could uh, be really suited by the race. And he's got that good form on the flat as well, hasn't he? Rated quite high on the level, so there could easily be more to come in this kind of sphere, couldn't there? Yes, exactly. Um, we didn't see the best of him at the... Uh, festival in March um, but I think there's plenty to come from him yet and as you said he's a very highly rated flat horse so I think um, that speed that he has will help him in a, in a competitive handicap hurdle like the Greatwood. And just quickly can we mention three under through five who is a potential runner on Sunday he might not go but if he does he looks a very exciting conveyance doesn't he going forward? He does definitely um, Exeter was always the plan with him and he won there nicely um, last week Cheltenham, it might come a little bit too soon for him, but it's a lovely race and Paul thought he was definitely worth giving an entry to and um, if he shows up there, he'll be in good form and he'll be a very exciting ride. And anything else on the weekend that you're particularly looking forward to, Adrian? Um, I think, other than those two on the Sunday, I think I'm relatively quiet. Um, I have a nice ride in Clombell on Thursday for the McNeil family, so it's great to be getting over there to ride one of the novice hurdlers early in the season as well. Certainly as well. Very best of luck with Tritonic and with Thrunder through five if he does run. Thanks very much for coming on, Adrian. Thank you very much.
It's not just Cheltenham that has got some fantastic action this weekend. Once again, it's the Grade 1 Morgiana Hurdle on the Sunday. And Willie Mullins has got a battalion of runners in this contest. Difficult to say which one he will rely on. But plenty have got chances, including of Saudi Sarawa, whoever turns up for him. Abacadabras is in the race. Last year's winner. Steve, obviously at this stage we don't really know who's going to run. But... It looks like being, as usual, a pretty informative contest. It will. It will. Uh, it, it, it's difficult. There's no. I mean, besides anything else, you really could do in knowing what what horses Willie Mullins is running. I'm just going to mention one horse. I'd rather than give a preview because I'm, I'm guessing as to who are running. The horse I'm most interested in watching is Zanaya, who I've already mentioned when we we're talking about the uh, the great uh, the, the great return. Anyway, I, I think it was a, a much better horse than he showed on Triumph Hurdle Day. I think his form in Ireland. His second last win mm. in particular was the best performance an Irish four-year-old put up last year. He's come out with a win. He looked a stayer when he won in his reappearance. And I don't know whether um, uh, he's going to be a two-mile. I suspect down the line he's going to want further. But again, if he does decide to take on some of the better regarded horses, he'll at least be doing it with fitness on his side. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big help in this kind of race. Saladier has got fitness on his side, but I don't think this is going to be the target for him. Although, of course, he has won the race in the past. We can have a look at last year's race, which was won by Abigadabris. Soren I have to say, I thought for Willie Mullins was extremely unlucky not to win this. Yep. His season rather petered off afterwards. Uh, but I think you've got to give Abacadabras a, a pretty large amount of credit because he came on and put behind him some fairly disappointing performances here. Well, Abacadabras is often a horse who can come there looking like a winner and not winning and, or, have, or have races snatched from him late on, as, as has happened at Cheltenham. Uh, but yeah, he got it all right this day. He's a highly talented horse, that, that, that is without doubt. Um, and he certainly deserved his, uh, his grade one win last year. And this was it. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you know, he's, he's, there's not much we don't have. He's got high cruising speed. He need, normally needs to be produced at the right time, mm -hmm. um, but this day, as I say, he did put it all in, which is something which maybe he hasn't always looked to do in the past. Yeah, I think we're going to get slightly better ground on Sunday than we got here, because it's likely that there won't be too much rain forecast in the air, and we can see Sorenwire jumping the last about six, yeah. seven lengths down, and only yeah. gets beaten the neck of the line, so Abacadabra is probably stopping rather than Sorenwire <laughs> gaining, but Jason the Militant, a good run two in third. Yeah, he's well known, isn't he, Abacadabra? <laughs> <Yes. this. laughs> <laughs> he nearly snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory there. Uh, yeah, I think he was stopping a bit personally, but um, he, it's difficult. I mean, he's a horse who really needs producing 50 yards of the line, which is, is certainly not easy over jumps. He's like a poor man's sea pigeon. Yeah, one of the most exciting things about this race, I think, is working out who's going to run this. So I'll yeah. bring in Leon to ask his thoughts on the contest. Leon, I don't know if you've got any more of an idea than we do about who's going to run in the contest. Willie Munnins, as usual, has got a whole host of performers, potential performance in the race. But uh, if you had to pick one out, who would it be? Yeah, look, I mean, it all depends on who's going to run. Um, Saldier is a horse that I'm intrigued by, Tom. Um, I mean, I go back to, I think it was three years ago, uh, when he nearly, well, I mean, he was probably going to beat the ill-fated then champion hurdle winner who went on to win a champion hurdle, Espar Dalan at Nace. And it was a very bad fall. And I think it's taken him a little bit of time to get his confidence back. But I was hugely impressed with his performance winning a Galway hurdle off top weight. Um, he's had a run already um, at the start of October when he beat the um, Joseph O'Brien trained Durasso, who has since gone on to win. And I just think Saldier, I know that they've held him in, in quite high regard and maybe he's disappointed on a couple of occasions, but I think his confidence is back. I think if he runs, having had the run already at the start of October, he'd be my kind of choice. But it's all going to depend on what Willie Mullins runs. Abracadabra broke a winning sequence of a number of years uh, to win the race. So whatever WP runs, I think everyone's got to take note. He's got a lot of entries in there at the moment. But Saldier, for me, I still think we haven't seen his full potential yet. I know they hold him in very high regard. So it'll be interesting to see if he lines up in the Morgiana at Punchestown on Sunday. Absolutely. I don't think you're expecting too much rain in the lead up to Sunday either, are you in Ireland? No, it doesn't seem to be. I mean, it's the sun is shining at the moment. Um, it's 14, 15 degrees. It's crazy weather at the minute. Uh, we haven't seemed to have got any type of rain that we would normally get, but it seems to be the way over the last couple of years coming into middle of November. And uh, normally when the ground should be at least soft, um, it doesn't seem to be materialising. So interesting to see what the weather forecast does. Uh, we know that Willie likes to get a bit of underfoot um, in terms of the conditions for some of his stable stars, he doesn't want to risk them too early. He didn't have any runners, of course, at Down Royal um, for that big meeting last weekend. So it'll be just interesting to see what the weather does and how many will actually turn up in this Morgiana. But I do feel 
with Saldier, I think he won't mind it. And I think because he's already, he's won a Galway hurdle, he's won in uh, the start of October, I think he's certainly one that could line up on Sunday at Punchestown. Lovely stuff, Leon. Thanks very much. Saldier for you. And of course, whatever Willie Mullins runs has got to be taken note of. He's won nine of the last ten renewals, I believe. But of course, connections of Abacadabra. So we're hoping he can pull a rabbit out of the hat once again in the Morgiana. <laughs> That's almost it for the first episode of This Is Racing. Many thanks to Steve Manish being in the studio with me. Just to wrap up, Steve, what are you most excited about this weekend? I'd like to be able to come back in a couple of weeks' times and still be talking in an up fashion about the chasing careers of Third Time Lucky and My Drogue. And that's what I'd like most in terms of um, they've got things that they, they ought to win, but things can go wrong in racing. So I'm looking forward to the, in terms of betting point of view, you, I'll be looking elsewhere, but that would be what I'd most like uh, to happen out the weekend. Yeah, it could be a massive weekend for Dan Skelton, couldn't it? Huge. Obviously with Nube Negra on Sunday too. And I mean, if he comes out with three winners and three, then he's looking pretty good for the season, and isn't he? And protector out as well. And protector out too, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, besides others we've probably missed. So yeah, he's very... I think that's going to be a, um, an ongoing thing. He's going to be strong at most of the big meetings. These I'd days. agree. And big selection for you in the big race is later. Yeah, it'd be my, be my selection. If I had one selection of the whole week, I would go for glory and fortune at the price. OK, brilliant. Welsh champion hurdle winner. Thanks very much to you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, many thanks too to Leon, but we can get his final words as well and his final thoughts on the meeting as a whole. Uh, Leon, a, a cracking three-day extravaganza is in prospect. If you had to pick out one race or one horse you're most excited about, who would it be? Um, look, I'm excited to see my jogger. There's no doubt. Third time lucky. They're very exciting. I think everyone loves a two mile chaser flat to the mat going as fast as they possibly can. Catch me if you can with third time lucky because he does ping from fence to fence. I think for value, I think spirit of the games at 20 to one in the big handicap chase on Saturday. Um, I think it's a knocking each way bet, but I think the Boyle Sports offer a free bet. If you finish second or third to the starting price favorite, there's going to be a couple of short price jollies. So I think it's a great offer over the three days for every single race at the November meeting. Lovely stuff, Leon. Thank you very much indeed for your time and enjoy the Morgiana too on Sunday, which of course should be an absolute belter of a race as well. But that is it for the opening episode of This Is Race and we hope you've enjoyed it in association with Boyle Sports, who of course have that fine offer on show all weekend. Looking forward to seeing you all very soon.